how to stop spiraling about your super tiny kitchen. Let me find the strength. Welcome to Interior Motives, where we solve wildly specific interior design troubles and craft a space that perfectly meets your design needs by diving into Wayfair's vast selection. Today, our goal is to turn the tiny kitchen whose sad, small interior is the reason why you single-handedly bankroll meal delivery apps into a kitchen that appears larger, brighter, and more inviting. At one point or another, just about everyone has had a teeny tiny kitchen and knows it is an absolute deterrent from cooking and entertaining. I remember my first kitchen in college. You could stand in the kitchen, dining room, living room, and main hallway all at the same time. Back then, it's endearing, but at a certain point, it becomes frustrating because the kitchen is so small that we feel like we can't use it. Here are three main reasons you are struggling with your kitchen. One, there isn't enough counter space for both decor and practical items. Having space to add decor in a kitchen is a luxury most of us can't afford. Things like cutting boards, appliances, cutlery, and dish soap have to come first. So we have to be creative in bringing character to our kitchens without having typical decorative items. The second reason why you feel like you can't use your kitchen is that it is dark and dreary or super sterile. If a kitchen is extremely dark, you can't see anything and it feels like a cave. I think we can all agree that there has never, ever, ever been something inviting about a cave. Never saw Martha Stewart design one, that's for sure. At the same time, if the kitchen is all white and super sterile, it feels more like a hospital than like a home. Three, it's cramped. If a space is cramped, it's hard to maneuver. So of course that is a deterrent. It's not a joy to spend time there, much less bake a quiche. While we won't be able to change the size of your kitchen, we will definitely make it feel less small. No matter which issue you're struggling with, this advice can help. Our approach to these issues will contradict everything you've ever been told about small spaces. Instead of keeping it super basic, we're going to add all of the personality that we can. We're just going to be super tactful in doing so. Let's get started. The common misconception is that designing a small space is all about adding more storage. Not everyone has a lot of things in their kitchen. Not everyone is a wannabe Gordon Ramsay. That's okay. That being said, I do want to impart a few decluttering tips to make living in the small space a bit more manageable. One, say goodbye to unnecessary appliances. They take up a massive amount of space. Consider investing in an appliance that has multiple functions. So instead of buying a toaster and an air fryer, buy a two-in-one like this one from Wayfair. Two, Use the extra space above your kitchen cabinets for storage. Buy some cheap storage bins and use that wasted space for dry goods that you don't need regular access to. When you don't have a dedicated pantry, that's your pantry. Three, stop buying in bulk. When you're in a small space, buying in bulk just isn't practical because you don't have any place to store those items. Four, add as many Lazy Susans as possible so that you always see the products you have available to you. Five, do your best not to stack products on top of one another in your cabinets. By that I mean, don't stack a cereal box on top of another one if there isn't a shelf separating the two. That's how food gets lost. Cabinet shelves are no place to play Jenga. Now that we've decluttered, it's time to design. By the end of this episode, the only stressful thing about the kitchen will be whether you put baking soda or baking powder in your recipe, which is something that I cannot help you with. To tackle today's design dilemma, we're going to design a galley style kitchen because they are considered a space saving style. It's one of the most popular styles in big cities and one that often makes people feel cramped when cooking. Most galley kitchens open up into a small dining nook, so we're going to tackle that as well to ensure you know how to best use your entire space. Dining room kitchen cohesion is extremely important because the rooms oftentimes feed into one another, literally and figuratively. They should complement each other stylistically instead of feeling like the kitchen is a distinct sterile entity and the dining room is an extension of the living room. The trick to any tiny kitchen is to brighten it up. 
You can take these tactics and adapt them to any variety of micro kitchen. The design style for this home is modern coastal. This means that a lot of inspiration is drawn from the ocean and beach. Therefore, there are nods to driftwood, water, and sand through colors and textures. Think of a typical beach house, but without any of those cheesy beach signs. That's where the modern aspect comes in. There are tons of clean lines and soft neutrals. The color scheme is blue, white, and gray. Blue for the ocean and sky, white for the sand, and gray for the wood and other outdoor elements. Introduce those colors in the kitchen. Now that we have our color scheme decided, we want to add a backsplash. This is one of the main places where we can add some personality, especially if this is a rental. I know you're probably thinking, but why would I invest if this is a rental? Relatively speaking, a backsplash is one of the more affordable ways to add personality to a rented space. Just think of how much money you'll save by cooking instead of always ordering in, now that you'll finally feel comfortable in your kitchen. A backsplash has power. It invites you in. This show is a backsplash stand show. Let's go with this blue subway tile because it introduces the blue we have elsewhere in the home and it has a glossy finish. Backsplashes are great because they protect the wall from stains. A glossy backsplash in particular is great because it reflects a ton of light, which helps the space appear larger. Reflected light in the kitchen is the perfect way to defeat cave kitchen. We also need to add something to the floor. So we're adding all three of our colors, gray, white, and blue via these vibrant floor tiles. I selected these tiles because they introduce the type of pattern we'd love to add via art, but don't have the wall space to put up. When you can't put art on the wall, put it on the floor. Since we've chosen such a vibrant floor, we actually aren't going to put down a runner, but you can certainly add an accent rug right beneath your sink if you think you need one. I'd recommend one that coordinates with the accent rug we will introduce in our dining area a little later on. Next, we need lighting, because one of the reasons your kitchen is nicknamed the Room of Doom is due to the fact that many kitchens have creepy horror movie lighting for whatever reason. Pro tip. The best type of lighting for a kitchen is actually daylight, which is on the cooler side, so use cool light bulbs. That's about all we can do for the technical structural design, but we can be smart about the rest of the elements we're adding. It's all about the details. We need a few countertop storage solutions. Since the area is tiny, we don't want to overload the countertops with the core that isn't functional. Let's focus on storage solutions that seemingly blend in with the kitchen. To keep your cooking utensils accessible, add this utensil crock. This one looks just like a vase, so you get the decorative touch that your kitchen needs. Another functional piece of decor is the cutting board. It looks like a piece of driftwood, so it can sit out on display at all times. But when it's time to cook, it's right there and available for use. Beside your stove top, add this spice rack. It's tiered, which means that it has ample space not only for the spices you regularly use, but for your smaller oil containers as well. The lightwood tones work well with your modern coastal theme. To avoid cluttering the countertops with your kitchen towels, use these over-the-door towel bars. They keep the towels accessible so that when you spill something, you can swiftly clean it up. Using these bars also helps free up some drawer space for other kitchen essentials. Add these kitchen towels to the bars to complete the look. For your dry goods, consider these dispensers. They keep food fresh for up to 45 days and can be mounted with either screws or double-sided tape, so you can place them on top of your backsplash. As for the kitchen itself, that's it. I know you're probably thinking, is she being serious? Yes, for the kitchen proper. Focusing on the dining area and the galley kitchen or kitchenette is just as important as the kitchen itself because they are paired. Dining areas are often neglected too, but they hold tons of power. On the main wall at the end of the galley, add this floor mirror. This mirror will make the entire hallway that is the galley kitchen look endless. Pro tip, mirrors are the secret weapons in small spaces, even kitchens. To brighten up the space more, let's add this chrome pendant. Chrome is cool-toned, which means it will pair well with the cool-toned lighting I want you to use in the kitchen. 
Plus, since blue is a cool tone color and we have tons of it in the kitchen, we want the metal to match that. Chances are that since you weren't cooking, you probably didn't have a designated dining area. It's okay. Tons of us eat in front of the television. To remedy that and use up this wasted space, we're going to add this dining table and pair it with two white chairs. Notice that these chairs have tons of open space in the back for light to pass through. On the wall behind the dining table, add this floral art. It has the same colors we've been using and we get a reminder of the outdoors even though flowers literally could never survive in here. For even more lighting, let's add these LED candles, which are great for ambiance. Below the table, we need to add a rug, just to switch up the textures and to create some division between the kitchen and dining areas. Rugs are a great way to divide spaces without formal room dividers. Of course, the space is tight, but if you want to elevate the dining area even more, add a bar cart. This is a great place to add the decor that wouldn't fit on the kitchen countertops, like this faux plant. It's also a great place to hold your wine and mixers. Plus, this bar cart rolls, so if it doesn't always fit in your tiny kitchen, you can roll it in for your romantic dates, but it can sit elsewhere the rest of the time. The main takeaway from today's episode is that you need to make your tiny space your own. It isn't necessarily about maximizing storage space, though that is important. It's really about making the space continuous with the rest of the home and making financially smart modifications that help the tiny space appear larger. That's it for today. Tune into our next episode of Interior Motives for another wildly specific interior design challenge. Your house is swimming in books? Relatable.